Life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race cars, phasers, arrow canes, and some fucking sharks might solve a mystery with Scooby Doo or rewrite history. We also with Scooby Doo, woo doo doo. The tales of daring do bad and good luck tales. Woo! I forgot to say DuckTales, DuckTales! Woo! This one has Kate Masucci, who's working on so she may get with me. I mean, she wouldn't have to obligation. I just do do nicely, give her flowers and. Uh. Hi, guys! You. Are watching Comics Corner right here on Technicolor Muck. And today we're reviewing. Oh God, come on, come on. Walt Disney Comics and Stories number. Your 75th anniversary collection. Yeah, that's it. Because it's Donald Duck Day. And I totally just didn't sing an embarrassing rendition of DuckTales saying how much I wanted to make out with Kate Masucci. Nope, 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 nope. Seriously, though, she is a lovely woman, and I wish her all the happiness in the world. Stupid celebrity crush or not, she is a talented voice actress. And she will probably never see this. Thank you, Jesus. But enough about my Hollywood crushes. Let's talk about this comic. You see, during the comics boom, Walt Disney Comics and Stories was one of the many anthology comics Disney did to, to make a buck. They already had their newspaper strips, but this was a way to cram a lot of their properties into one place and make money. What, you expect this to be some big, noble pursuit? No, they just wanted money. But, the comic is notable for one thing. Carl Barks. For those who don't recognize the name, Carl Barks is the guy who created Scrooge McDuck. And basically personified Donald. His unlike working hard, trying to impress Daisy, every man they've seen in a lot of shorts, you know, back when they actually made them, and that... That's him. He, since he didn't have the funny voice to fall back on, he made Donald more of a realized character. Sometimes he was an irresponsible idiot, but he was kind of. But that's the point. We're all irresponsible idiots with money sometimes. And he was he was recrafted to represent the common man. And it. I mean, and don't get me wrong, Barks wasn't all about comedy stories that related to everyone, to the working class plights while still entertaining children. He also created, again, he created Scrooge and Donald Duck really was the most daring adventure of all time in the original comics. So, today I'm going to honor that duck and his rich uncle a little bit with this review. But since it's an anthology book, while well, most of the stories are Donald and he's on the cover, I'm not going to show you digital edition. He is, this is still mostly about him and Donald with Donald's rich comic history and me buying this on sale last month when they had a huge Donald Duck sale. I can't think of a better tribute. But... The collection has a ton of different variety to it. Little one-offs, some draw apparently written by Walt Disney himself, a bunch of little one-pagers, and if you haven't seen one in a comic, don't feel too bad. It's mostly something seen in Archie comics and other old comedy comics. Basically a one-off gag strip that's just contained in a single page. And a few one or two pagers. So I'm mostly going to talk about the other stories. For the record, most of those are pretty good. Pretty funny and inter relatively entertaining. 
Some a little dated, but when you're trying to celebrate the 75th anniversary of something, sometimes you will be a little dated. As for who's actually publishing it, it's the great publishing house of IDW, who we'll talk more about, but basically they almost entirely do license stuff to the point that their shared comics universe is a Hasbro shared comics universe that just started up with Wrong Space Knight, and should be Marvel, G.I. Joe, all kind of, and centered around Transformers who already had their own universe before everyone else was grandfathered in. Also, the guy from Mask is a teenager. But enough about IDW. I've stalled this review long enough. Let's dive in. First story is The Mighty Trapper. This is a Carl Barks one, but I question why this was put in here. Basically, it's about Donald Duck bragging about how he trapped animals and just, like, even a few years ago or even in the 80s or something, were people, like a 30 years ago, were people really talking about trapping animals? I mean, hunting, sure. People still do that, and I'm not getting into that one. I'm not stepping towards that minefield, but... Like, using bear traps and shit on animals? Like, that's just kind of horrible. Like, I get it if you it's your income and you need it to survive and at the dawn of the century. But I'm not really all for skinning animals or just hunting them for sport with fucking traps. Using a gun and but just... Why would you make an animal suffer just to make your dick hard? Why, Donald? Why? That being said, it's okay. Basically, Huey doing Lee tried to prank him to get him to shut the fuck up. He finds out, blah, blah, blah. He's seen this plot a million times. Next one. And if it looks like I'm blatantly reading off my Kindle, I am. I don't have a good memory. Next is Wolf is Wolf and Wolf's Corning. Wolf and Wolf's Clothing by Gil Turner, who I don't know much about. Barks was a legend, Gil, I don't know, but it's a pretty decent story. Basically, it's about an old pair from Disney cartoons you may or may not know, mostly from House of Mouse because he showed up. Big Bad Wolf and his son, who's less than bad. Basically think those Sylvester cartoons with his son who doesn't want to be a wolf or those Pearl or Pearls Before Swine with Larry and his son Junior who doesn't want to kill Zebra. That sort of thing. And it's actually a nice premise. Basically his son gets cast as the woodsman. The wolf tries to impersonate him. A good time. This is a little different than usual for me. Now we get into... There's a bunch of B-related ones I thought were Walt Disney, but no, it turns out some guy named Earl Duvall. There are, however, a few by Walt Kelly, of all people. If you don't know, Walt Kelly created the comic strip Pogo, which I've tried to read. Emphasis on tried. But it is a good strip, I think. It's just... It used the pop culture of the time, and like some Bloom County strips for me... Even with my 80s knowledge, I can't pierce them. Now imagine that with pop culture from over 80 years ago or so. And that's a slight... No, it's not really that much of an exaggeration. Like, maybe take a 10 years off, but Jesus. That said, the strips are fairly entertaining. But we're here for the main stories. Riding the Rails, which just kind of overlaps... For most of the stories for a while. Basically, Donald and Goofy are rail conductors for some reason. With Don with Ruth with Mickey. I am all effed up today. With Mickey being the conductor, Goofy shoveling coal, and then picking up their box and grandma duck. A comics character who I have to explain. She's Donald's grandma. And she has an idiot assistant named Gus who has nothing to do with this. 
That's all. They have to convince her to reopen the the mines in order to provide business for the town. But a bunch of the miners have some ulterior motives to keeping it closed and are sabotaging Mickey. And he can't stand it. He knows they planned it. And he's got to set it straight this water gate and stop him. It's a pretty fun tale, even at the first act. And yeah, it's broken up in the acts is pretty damn stupid with Mickey not picking up until the second part of the story that he's being sabotaged because they're using but even then it's at least has a logical explanation well we can figure out it's sabotage because one of them was stupid enough to send a letter Mickey just figures their you know average occurrences on the rail on an old timey rail car simple as that that said, it would have worked better without the thugs sending threatening letters and thus making Mickey look like the biggest dumbass. It's an okay story, but probably didn't need to be as long as it did. There's a short story I forget the name to that has Donald dealing with Chip and Dale, their usual stick, them trying to steal stuff, etc., etc. It's still, it's pretty enjoyable, also pretty sock stuff. There's another Junior and uh, Big Bad Wolf story where Junior tries to fake being, being bad in order to throw his father off his trail after his father's threatened with being out for... Well, basically standard cartoon stuff, but still pretty fun story with, with Junior basically faking like he's the baddest motherfucker who ever fucked. Bet you didn't. Slash looking worse than action. Is a really, really good Donald Duck story that makes up entirely for the trapping one. I mean, there's some others after this. I'll get to them in a second. But basically, Donald Duck is working as the middleman for a bookie because apparently betting was legal back then. Problem was, he takes some bets for a boxing gym, forgets to put them in... And now has to run from an army of boxers who want to beat the shit out of him and break his legs, as you do, because he didn't put in their bet. It's understandable. He doesn't have the money to pay it, so he's running for his life. They're mad because he screwed up. But he also, but it's just a fun story. He lucks into some money, and it's also nice because it doesn't have the screw you Donald ending you think, and he ends the story with a measure of of respect and a pile of cash that he uses on an interesting present. If you're not going to spoil it, but if you read the story, you'll like it. It's good. Next we have Magicka, March of the Di Science. Dinosaurs. A fun little Ludwig von v Drake story that tells... Achoo! Fuck! It tells of the extinction of the dinosaur, life of the dinosaurs, their extinction, all that. Fun little story that makes me want to see more Ludwig von Drake, and I just got nostalgic for House of Mouse. I just love that show. Next up, we have Magic has Missing Magic. And that story is also really good. And just a D spell you might know from DuckTales, and if not, she's a sorcerer. And she's after Scrooge's number one dime because she thinks there's magic in it. Which varies between stories if it actually is magic. It's a whole thing I'm not getting into. But basically, it doesn't have Scrooge in it. Well, these are end goal. They're basically trying to get a singing flea from Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Because it can open a, a, a box by playing the opera for it. Or classical music. It's vague, but it's fun with her various disguises failing, including one with a dog where she just gets... That actually had me laughing for a while. And the ending gag of what's actually in the box once they defeat her, as well as a love spell she cast before that on Donald, 
is just pretty funny. Just some real quality, just top notch, top of of the uh, top of the game stuff. Surprisingly, not from Carl Barks. Go figure. We have two more tales, or three more tales. My bad. Open door policy, which is what you the kind of Scrooge adventure you'd expect. Scrooge McDuck, Donald's rich uncle, has to get. So an invention from Gyro Gear Loose, an instant door that can open anywhere. Naturally, despite being a pretty cool thing, it backfires when the Beagle Boys steal it, and you, there are a bunch of douchebags that try to steal from Scrooge, as you do, and then use it to get into Scrooge's money bin, because he hasn't apparently heard of banks or doesn't trust them. I don't know. Though, granted, given some of these stories came out of the Great Depression, I can't at least understand why maybe he wouldn't want to put money in a bank. But it has a clever ending where he gets one over on them, and overall is a fun sto story, as I've been saying about most of these. And, uh, a kind of ma Just like magic, and you have to forgive me for using the Kindle here, or you don't, but... It's hard to keep track of all these. I need a note card or something if I wasn't using it. It's just easier to use it when it has a listing of all the stories. Just like Magic is a pretty good story starring Oswald the Lucky, Ra Lucky Rabbit. He meditates a magician to get in his girlfriend's Christmas. Comes off as kind of an asshole. It's okay, but given he comes off as kind of a douchebag, it's, it's just not all that funny. I do really like Oswald, though, and really wish I could play Epic Mickey. I've heard it's mixed, but the story's good. And I pr will probably get the Epic Mickey exclusive for the 3DS at some point to hear, like, those great old Genesis platformers. I did have a Genesis as a kid. It was fun. Can I say? And finally, we have... The Duck Who Came to Dinner by Carl Bartz. A comedy story to close things out, featuring Scrooge, but primarily about Donald. Scrooge decides to come over for the 8th upteenth time and bore Donald the story of how he saved his first dollar. But they've all heard it, and hilariously, Donald has given his nephews a list of plans to... To get him out. I'm not going to talk too much about this one, but it's fun and it's a great way to close out the collection. Both parties winning in a way in the end. And both being sympathetic. With Scrooge understanding he just wants to actually help Donald for once instead of abuse him for cheap labor. More than that, if I review more Donald Duck, com Duck and Scrooge comics, which. I, next time there's a sale? Damn straight. Hey, I'm going to get some. Uh, let's uh, take a look. Anyways. It's just a fun little story. And overall, that's what this collection is. A bunch of fun story. I honestly talked a bit too long about it. For four bucks digital on Amazon, which also transfers to Comixology, I'd recommend this. It's a fun little distraction, it's a nice chunk of content, it gives you a nice smattering of DC content, sorry, Disney content from present to day all the way to the past and the glory days of Carl Barks. It's fun, and if you're a Duck, uh, if you're a DuckTales fan or all excited about the upcoming reboot or both, you're going to love this, to a point. But if you want more adventurous Scrooge, IDW has some Italian reprints they've been doing to tickle your fancy. I'll get those some other day, but for now, I'm Jacob Mangley, and that's my opinion. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Subscribe. Follow my sister channels that I mentioned in the last video. And have a wonderful day after Donald Duck Day.